Good morning again. We are in closeout of transportation projects, and here again is Christine Hildebrand to walk us through that. Thanks, guys. Okay, so you can all see what I'm seeing. Right. Um, so, what is project development closeout? When and how does project development closeout occur? Um, we're going to go over the project development closeout handoff package, um, some timeline and lessons learned. Um, what is project development closeout? It's the transition process to migrate the design knowledge, systems, and operations from the project delivery office to the construction resident engineer's office to allow for successful implementation of the project construction phase. Um, once the TPM completes the project development stage, the resident engineer will take over the construction management stage, and um, this the elements of this process, incl process include transferring the completed work and remaining project responsibilities to others. So you'll be demobilizing your design team in the design sense um, for development and uh, ensuring that they can assist in the construction phase. The purpose of a complete transit package is to assure the construction office has all they need and um, resource-wise and documentation-wise to construct the project. When does the handoff occur? Um, the project delivery life cycle shows construction management transition occurring after bid opening and the pre-construction phase. Um, and I'm just going to say that successful handoff actually occurs during design. So successful transition starts when the construction office is engaged during the initial constructability review. Um, that's when they are inputting their information into the DAP narrative, and as well as participating in um, PDT meetings, and then again at all the milestone design reviews, not just advanced or final plans. Um, the goal is a biddable and buildable project, so helping your team see that the construction office is the end user for your project will really assist you in the transition process. So construction involvement fundamentals during the design phase. Constructability, um, that includes your staging and um, your public information and outreach, your mobility, your work zone safety, and I wanted to ask if there's any others that someone thought that construction should be involved in. We're all covered? Okay. So keeping them involved as active stakeholders along the way, um, making them um, have voice and as they review the project will just assist in the handoff efforts. So if we look at the statewide transition process for construction management transition, um, you can look at the project delivery guide. It will state that for information regarding your construction management, see the construction manual. If you go to the construction manual, you will find no information on project delivery handoff to construction. So what I'm here to share with you today is that um, it is a region-specific process, and so Whatever I say is actually what I do in my region and it actually in, even in my area. So you will want to check in with your region and your area manager and find out what your construction office is expecting, but I'm just gonna share with you what has been helpful along the way on my side of things. <clears throat> so, the transition process. I generally schedule a handoff meeting. I create a handoff package. Um, I attend the pre-construction meeting, and then I invite myself to success and lesson learned meetings after the project has been constructed. When I do the handoff meeting, I invite all the key designers, applicable access people, right-of-way, utility reps, the rec, public information officer, your communi community affairs, your area manager, and I would also suggest inviting your district manager or the TMM for that project's area. Um, and I prepare a design documentation. I have shared with you uh, a handoff checklist 
Um, I create that, I put that in ProjectWise, and I put links to every single document within it. So when I have the meeting, I basically have my agenda and all the documents I'm gonna cover in that meeting on one spot. So, um, you guys all have a copy. I'm just gonna kinda go over each section a little bit as to why it's important in the handoff um, process. So, key elements of the handoff checklist. The project management documentation, your public involvement documentation, your permits and agreements, your certifications, your design documentation and reports. So in the project management documentation, um, you'll have a list of your PD team members, your project narrative. For some regions, that narrative goes from design through PSD, so it's very informative to your construction office as they're taking it over. You'll have your master comment log, which again shows the construction office some of the decisions that were made along the way. Um, you can have a link to your project design folder and your bidding documents folder. Um, this is also a good time to go over any um, unique or unusual special provisions that might need attention. Um, your public involvement. This is when you'd have your resource of your community affairs person present. Your construction office should have been involved if there was any public outreach along the way. If you had a public open house, um, construction staff should be present so they don't have any surprises when they start to uh, break ground. Um, in that, I provide a communications plan, my project information paper, list of any uh, stakeholders that are um, pertinent to the project. Um, you do this with your PIO office, and um, this is the opportunity to go over any risks, ex expectations, and vice versa. Permits and agreements. Um, and also rail orders, I guess that would be listed there. Um, go over your IGAs, your railroad um, agreements and permits, local permits, environmental permits, environmental documentation, and others as applicable. Your rec will be there. Um, any agreements that you've made with state parks, this would be a great time to go over that with the construction office. Um, any right of way um, issues that you're having at that time with are, are with the environmental um, office, you can uh, discuss that. And then finally, your certifications that apply to the utilities and right of way. So your re utility rep would be present and they could go over the coordination and where the utilities are in regards to um, allowing the contractor to get in on time and any schedule impacts that they might foresee. Um, the right-of-way agent can be present. They can talk to the construction office again and let them know any state obligations um, that they made and um, make sure that those are fully understood. And um, at this time, too, it's also good that any communications that staff has had with the local property owners at that time, you can just kind of say this is the general area, these are the neighbors, these are the people. It just sets everyone off on the right foot. Um, so, design documentation. Anything that you had placed on eBids, I just put up and then we go over that as a team and the construction office has the opportunity to ask any questions. Um, this also is a good time to bring up landscaping and maintenance can make sure they understand what they're going to be getting in the end product. Um, so timeline for this is I usually send off my checklist to the construction office ahead of time to make sure if they have any questions, they can be thinking about these beforehand. And then I schedule this handoff meeting prior to going to advertisement so the construction office can be completely informed when um, answering the bidder's questions. They also um, will have met the designers more and had established that relationship so that when the questions do come in, they can be asking those questions and um, communication can happen a lot quicker. Um, I'll attend the pre-con meeting and that helps me assess if there's any follow-up needed, maybe some permits, understandings, or just engaging my public information officer to ensure that they're aware of what's coming, um, what the closures really are, and if there's any anything that needs um, 
understood, so I could let them know to contact the, the construction office. And then just making yourself available during construction. And finally, we don't have the slides, but um, I did want to just say at the end of a project, um, during, well, during construction, your, your construction office is going to be really busy building, and they don't often engage you. But if you can attend crew meetings, invite yourself out um, and show that you're interested, they will, they love to have you out to the site and they'll make sure that you're attending when the work is being performed. And um, it's just a good opportunity for you to even bring out your design team and let them see what's happening. Um, and you can start talking about um, things that are going well, things that could be addressed in the future. And then again, at the very end of your project, the transition where you can have um, the full cycle of the feedback. Once everything's been constructed, um, the resident engineer can have a meeting with you and your team. Sometimes you have to facilitate that. Actually, oftentimes you have to facilitate that. And um, again, go over anything that you can learn in the future. So that's all I have for handoff. Again, it's very region specific. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Questions for Christine? Is there anything that's David working well? Go with David. So, so Christine, uh, I know that after a project goes to bid, mm -hmm. you know, it's really in the hands of construction. But um, I know there may be instances where a PDT member or a TPM may want to go do a project site visit. Mm -hmm. So coordination there of maybe having the conversation of when there's a critical work element, you know, and coordinating of, yeah, when they're gonna lay the gravel under that, that new box culvert would mm -hmm. be a good time for the hydraulics engineer to come out. Right. So how, what's the suggestion you give to the TPMs about uh, wanting to get out to a construction site? So uh, I just keep that relationship with your resident engineer close because they're getting the contractor schedule look ahead and so they know when to anticipate work is happening so um, just keep that relationship close and you can even ask to be on that distribution list so that you'll get that schedule and you can inform your um, resources that that work is happening uh. Sorry if you already covered this, but I was curious if, is there a process or method for the construction team to give feedback to the TPM? Uh, formally, is there a process? So there is a construction narrative. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a really neat form. But on it, it says feedback from the design team. So your construction office should be engaging you and asking. Um, so that, that is their process. How it's being done, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have a quick question and, and I guess yes. comment as well. Um, so in, in Region 1, we stay on with the A&E contract for outsourced projects. Okay. And when they do the CA, CI, um, and public involvement. And we also close the project out okay. of that contract. Um, so I was wondering, um, you know, that so there is that involvement. Um, and we'll do any amendments if there's more public involvement needed or additional um, construction support. Um, and then we also assist in closing out that A&E contract. Right. Um, does other regions do things differently? I know some um, project managers will stay on and do the construction as well. Yes, um, that happens. I should have prefaced this all that this is how internal projects are closed out? Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, there's a very detailed process for outsourced projects or local projects. Thank you. Other questions? The um, <clears throat> idea of Getting the team involved even through construction and the designers coming out and you know, mm -hmm. I, I can certainly see the value of that communication there. I'm just curious, uh, how do you pay for that? Or where do you have people build time? Oh, uh, our, my construction office lets them go build to that. To CD. the construction mm -hmm. EA? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I just so, dev, hadn't seen that done, so I was yeah. curious. That's the first question I usually get asked. So it's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Good. Glad to see that. Other questions for Christine? Christine, that means you were perfection. Huh. 